Hey, science explorers, it's Justin again. You know, after spending a few weeks in the savanna, I realized I'm totally comfortable living in this biome. I think I was made to live here. What's that, Mia? You, you think I haven't always been built for the savanna? Okay, what do you think? Have I changed anything about myself since we got here? Do you do or wear anything different when it's hot outside? This has me thinking, how exactly do animals adjust to living here? They are built to live here. So what special traits do they have that make living in the savanna so natural for them? Let's find out. Okay, so I did start wearing this hat to protect me from the sun. And I've also been carrying this water bottle everywhere I go to make sure I'm staying extra hydrated. I changed my appearance and behavior to adjust to living here. And now I feel adapted or adjusted to feel comfortable in the savannah's dry season. <laughs> Mia says that's exactly what the animals here have done. They have adaptations or characteristics that help living things better survive in their habitat. Animals can't buy clothes or carry water bottles like we can. Instead, they develop special traits that help them live more comfortably. These adaptations can be physical, specialized parts of their bodies, or they can be behavioral, like habits that they've learned over time. I'm sure we've already seen a lot of animal adaptations in the savanna, since there are so many challenges to living here. Let's take one more ride through the grasslands and see if we can identify adaptations in a few of the animals we know. <laughs> we are on the lookout for one animal that has some of the biggest adaptations, the elephant. Elephants need to adapt in similar ways as I did. They need to stay cool and find water. So we'll need to look for how elephants' bodies and behaviors have adapted to help them take care of themselves. Oh, look over here. I think I see a group of elephants through the grass. Let's start with their physical adaptations. Which parts of these animals' bodies help them to stay cool? Their ears. We learned that elephant ears have two ways of keeping them cool, by fanning their bodies and by releasing body heat. Elephants wouldn't be able to regulate the temperature of their big bodies without some extra help. That's why their ears developed to be wide and flat for extra cooling power. What about their trunks? How could these be a physical adaptation? What role do trunks play in their day-to-day -day life? Ah, right, they use their trunks to help them drink water. But why do they need to do that? Don't other animals drink water without trunks just fine? Well, imagine what it might look like if elephants had to drink from the watering hole without their trunks. They would have to bend their big bodies down and take tiny sips for a long time to fill their big stomachs. Having a long trunk allows them to suck up a few gallons of water at a time so they can drink with ease. Now let's observe the elephant's behavior. What can elephants do to help them stay cool? Does it look like this elephant is covering itself in mud? I think it is. Do you think it's just having fun or is there something more to it? I bet the wet mud feels refreshing on a hot day, but it looks like they keep it on after playing. Well, that's odd. Mia, can you look up what they might be doing? The mud is a sunscreen? Oh, I see. The mud covers their skin and keeps their bodies from getting sunburnt. So playing in the mud is actually an adaptive behavior to keep elephants healthy and comfortable. Let's look out for another animal that we recognize, the leopard. 
We'll have to closely scan the tree canopy to find these big cats hiding. While we're on the hunt, think back to where leopards live and how they find their food. Then try to identify one physical and one behavioral adaptation these big cats have developed to help them thrive. Pause the video now and write down your ideas in your field notes. Ah, here we go. I think we've spotted one. You get it? We spotted one. Leopards have spots. Okay. But could their spots be an adaptation? Don't they help them to camouflage or blend into the light and shadows of the tree canopy so they can conceal themselves from their prey? Yeah, I think that does mean camouflage is a physical adaptation. When an animal's appearance helps them blend into their environment, they are definitely adapting to their surroundings to help them survive. Now let's focus on its behavior. What actions or habits have we seen this leopard display that might give it an advantage? I remember that leopards tend to be nocturnal. They sleep during the day and are most active at night. Do you think that adjusting their sleep schedule could be a type of adaptation? We know it can get pretty hot during the day here. So being active at night is a lot less exhausting than moving around in the hot sun. Moving through the night also gives leopards an upper hand while hunting. They can sneak up on prey that might be sleeping or unable to see them through the darkness. So being nocturnal is an adaptation. It's a behavior that helps leopards to find food and stay comfortable in their hot, dry habitat. Elephants, leopards, and all of the animals in the savanna have a lot of amazing adaptive traits many more than we've had time to observe on our journey today. But now we have the skills to identify adaptations in all kinds of animals. We just need to understand the unique challenges they face in their habitats. There's a type of biome with an even more extreme environment that I'd like to visit next, where the temperature soars to over a hundred degrees during the day and the land can go years without rain. That's right. I'm talking about the desert. Thanks for coming along with me and me on this adventure. Remember, our wildest discoveries are yet to come. Until our next journey, science explorers.